Hello, today I'd like to show you how to have a little bit of fun with some 5 inch squares. Um, if you've been watching some of my videos you might have got the hang of the fact that I quite like 5 inch squares by now. Um, and I also quite like bright colours. But we're going to have a little bit of fun today with a little block that I've made and I've called it splits. Um, because it's just split between two 5 inch squares. It ends up a little bit smaller than 5 inches. But I'll show you what I've done. Um, so I'm actually just using a, a plain white. So I've got quite a few white squares and then some colours. And so I've cut quite a lot of the white and some colours and I've layered them in a pile here. Now I'm using my board to help me line things up. And I've just layered a white square. And, and these fabrics are all right side up. Now the white probably doesn't really matter which way it goes, but we'll be using it the right top side as the right side. Then I've layered one of the squares on top. Then I've layered another white and another coloured square on top. That's because we, we because we're alternating, we can layer them that way and cut them, and then they're ready to sew together as well. So if you line them up with the lines on the board so that they're sitting comfortably, we're going to cut it. Now this is a, on an angle. This is obviously not just a, a straight half. Um, so I'm going to line it, because I'm lining it up on my board, I can use the markings on my board. So this is five inches across the square. So we're going to line the ruler up so that it starts at the two inch mark coming from my left. And it's going to go at an angle to the opposite two inch from the right, from my right. Um, and I'm going to cut through all four layers together. Now, if you're going to make a quilt using these blocks, you will always end up with them the same if you cut them all the same. So that's why I've said if you keep them the right side up, they will end up all the same. If you have some going up the other way, you'll end up with a reverse, which may not be helpful for what you're trying to do. We're really just going to have a little play. I'm going to show you how you can play. So I'm just cutting that along that line. So that was two inches along from one end and two inches along from the other end. And now so that I can sew them together, I'm going to take the top one on the left and put it to the bottom. And now I'm ready to sew a colour to a white all the way through that pile. So I'll just take them to the sewing machine. We're going to use a regular quarter inch seam and I'm just going to line this up. Now because it's cut on an angle, there's a funny little bit at each end, but you'll find that that little point will extend uh, at about the quarter inch mark where we're going to be sewing. So just line them up as best you can. We will be trimming down so it's not absolutely critical at this stage. Um, so just with your quarter inch seam now. So it does look a little strange. Can you see it's sitting at a funny angle? But that's okay. So you could get quite a few of these cut if you wanted to and make your stack because now I'm going to pick up the next pair. So the next pair is just sitting there waiting for me. So I'm going to flip the right side over. We're sewing the right sides together. And that's all ready for me to sew now. And I, so I can chain piece these. We can have several ready and just keep going. So back to my pile. The next one's ready. I can just flip that over. Put it right sides together with the white and it's ready to sew. Well, it will be when I've lined it up. And into the machine. And just the last one now for my little stack here. I would probably, if I was making a quilt, I would probably get quite a few ready in a stack because I quite like the chain piecing. I can just get going on it. So that's all I'll do just at the moment. Now I'm going to snip those apart. And I'm going to quickly iron them. Ironing is always a good thing. It always helps things sit nicely. So now because I'm using white, I'm going to lay my white fabric down first. And I'm going to hold the iron. So I've got the right side up. And I'm just going to let that press that over so that the Seam is going towards the colour so it doesn't show through the white. So we started with some 5 inch squares. They're now not going to be square anymore because we've taken a, 
a slice right from the middle. But we're going to trim them back to being square, but they will be a bit smaller. But uh, overall, not a lot of wastage. So as you can see, I'm going to end up with something like that, and currently it's, it's way too long and a little bit too wide. So I'm going to lay, again, I like to use my board to line things up. And uh, mine is uh, sitting at about a quarter of, we're going to be trimming it down to four inches. So mine is sitting at about a quarter of an inch either side of that four inch line. So you want to balance it so that, so that your angled seam still sits pretty much in the middle of your block. So I've got approximately a quarter inch and they may not be exact. Fabric has a little habit of its own. Things are not always exact. But I do want it to be four inches, so I'm going to trim off about a quarter of an inch on either side of that block. So again, lining up with the board. I find the markings on the board really helpful because it's kind of just all sitting there. And another quarter inch off the other side. So now my block is four inches wide, and it's still five inches long. Now you could use it like that as a little rectangular block, that would be fine. But I want mine to be square today. So I'm going to lay that. Again, I've lined it up with the lines on the board. And I've approximately half an inch either side of that four inch line. And I'm going to trim on that line. And I do all the squares the same way so that they're all ending up fairly similar. So whilst we've got a little bit of a funny angle, uh, we're ending up with a similar look. So I'm just going to do one more just to go through that again. So line up. It should be five inches long, so it should sit on those lines. It's going to be approximately a quarter of an inch beyond the four inch line each time. So I'm just going to trim that off to make it four inches wide. I'm going to turn it round and it's now going to sit half an inch either side of the four inch line approximately and be four inches that way. So we'll just trim these little bits off. And I've ended up with a nice four inch square block. And now I'm just going to show you that there's lots of things you can do. You can have a real fun time playing with these blocks. So I've made a few already so that I can show you that. And I'll just give you a little bit of an idea. I had a little play on my software program on the computer. And I've done a few suggested possible layouts. Um, they could be a whole lot more exciting with fabric, of course, than what I've done here. But it was just to give you a bit of an idea of some different things that we're going to do. So this first one that I've got up the top here, I've just got some of my blocks laid out more or less in that angle. So they would end up as strips. So what I've used in the way of colours is I kind of wanted one colour, but not just one colour. So I've got blue and green, which are almost one colour. And, uh, and a few other little splashes of colour on it, but basically it's kind of that blue and green with the white, which I'm hoping when I make it up into a quilt will end up, if I did this layout, I'd end up basically with, with these stripes, with this little jagged edge coming along, which I thought was quite fun. Now, to do this option number two that I've put up here, um, all you have to do is actually turn around every second block. so that you end up with a wider, jagged sort of stripe, I suppose you'd call it. Now you could do these going horizontally or you could do them going vertically. Um, if this sort of design appealed to you, I think it's a lot of fun. And um, you could use it in multicolor, of course, you'd have a slightly different look. Um, I was wanting something that almost blended, but not completely. So there you can see that you can get that sort of stripe. And again, you've got this sort of jagged thing happening here when they're all joined up. That would just be slightly smaller, I guess. Um, another option I might show you quickly would be perhaps this sort of uh, pinwheel look, which can be quite fun to do. Um, and for that one, we just need to turn the blocks around again. So basically, to make one of the pinwheels, you just need four of these little blocks. So I'll turn some of these around so you can see how the pinwheels appear. So it's just uh, in that way. So I have, this, have the narrower end 
in towards the middle of your um, coloured strip so that it kind of goes out a bit like a blade. And you would put them all together like that throughout your quilt if that was the design that you were wanting. So what I'm trying to show you here is that there's a lot of fun to be had just playing. You may have a design wall at home. A design wall is great fun. It might have a sort of a, a flannel cotton brushed surface and the fabrics will just stick to it. I have got one but it's not in the right place to show you. Um, so you can see there that there's lots of possibilities. Um, shall I just do one more possibility? I might show you this zigzag possibility if I can get that one right while you're watching. So we're going to go that way, that way, that way. So that one must... Which way does that one go? Not that way. Yes, that one way. Oh, we get this work. That one, that one, that one. Okay. We'll get this one going down and then we'll be able to see better what we're doing. What's that next one doing? Coming along there, coming along there. And that one's going along there. So can you start to see this zigzag that's forming here? And we've got this last little one coming down here. And that one goes there. So you, there you can see that you're getting this fun zigzaggy, woggy, wonky zigzaggy shape coming down through there. So that was um, just a little idea that I had to cut a five inch square in half and place it with another color and I've called it splits and as you can see there are so many possibilities and so out of this I really just wanted to encourage you to have a little play to try out different colors maybe get a pencil and paper and draw up some ideas or if you've got some software on your computer of course that's another way of doing things um, but it was really just an encouragement just to show you how much fun you can have just playing with five inch squares you don't need a lot of fabric you don't need even a lot of colors necessarily um, but it is just fun. Thank you very much.